Your customer has brought you a concern we hear all too often as the weather starts to turn warm. That's an AC system that just won't cool the car. You hook your gauges up to it, you notice that the pressures are about the same, yet you can see that the compressor is running. Easy, right? It's got to be a bad compressor. Maybe not. Stick around and I'll explain in this edition of The Trainer. What's one of the first things that you would do when dealing with a poor AC system performance concern? Well, if you're like me, one of the first things that I like to do is open up the hood, turn the AC on full blast, and see if the compressor is engaging. If it's not, the first thing I would suspect is a low refrigerant charge. But what if you found that the compressor was engaged? Wouldn't a system performance test to be next in line? And if the pressure difference between the low and high side of the system was low or non-existent, wouldn't we tend to lean toward a failed compressor? Now, the majority of systems that you're used to working on use what's called a fixed displacement compressor. What that means is, is that the displacement of the compressor, much like the displacement of the engine that drives it, is a fixed amount. And as long as the compressor is spinning, it's pumping as much refrigerant as it's capable of pumping. And the faster we spin that compressor, the higher the system pressures will be. The only way to control the pumping charge and system pressures is to control when the compressor is allowed to be engaged to the vehicle's accessory drive system. And that's typically done through an electronic clutch mounted to the front of the compressor. The biggest disadvantage to the fixed displacement compressor is that when it is engaged, it's pumping at full capacity, regardless of the ambient temperature and regardless of the temperature demands being made upon it by the cabin's occupants. This wastes fuel and it makes it more difficult to closely regulate the vehicle's interior temperature. Back in the late 90s, the OEMs introduced the variable displacement compressor. This new design uses an adjustable swash plate, allowing for the displacement of the compressor to be constantly regulated in response to changing demands on the AC system. And while there are several different manufacturers of variable displacement compressors, the designs are very similar. The first type is a direct drive compressor that's controlled by a pulse width modulated voltage signal only. The second type is basically the same, but with the addition of a conventional electromagnetic clutch mounted on the compressor shaft. The direct drive compressor does have a potential drawback to it though, since it's constantly engaged, even if it's pumping very little, should the refrigerant leak out of the system, it could impact oil flow through that compressor. And that could result in starvation to that spinning compressor. And you know what's going to happen then. Catastrophic compressor failure could occur. Now in comparison, if the compressor is equipped with an electronically operated clutch and the system loses its refrigerant charge, well, we know what happens then, don't we? The ECM will see the low system pressure and will prohibit the operation of the compressor. This is to point out just how important it is to find even the smallest of leaks if you're dealing with a repair on a direct drive system to help minimize the possibility of that catastrophic damage from occurring. If you're diagnosing a system where the variable compressor uses an electromechanical clutch, the first step is to check the system static pressure. Is there sufficient pressure in the system to allow the clutch to engage? If there is, then you must check the operation of the clutch itself. Is it receiving a good voltage supply and does it have a good ground? Voltage drops in the electromechanical clutch circuit are a common cause of clutch failure 
and clutches that won't engage. Now the direct drive compressors are a slightly different story. Since they are constantly being driven by the accessory drive system, most have a safety feature design that will separate the compressor from the accessory drive in the case of a catastrophic compressor failure or seizure. These safety features are typically either a plastic shear pin or a hard rubber drive, similar to what you would see on a harmonic balancer, that separates should the compressor experience a catastrophic failure, and it isolates it then from the accessory drive system. To check the operation of the direct drive pulley, isolate it from the accessory drive system. Manually rotate the pulley and feel for a slight resistance or drag. If the clutch freewheels or part of it doesn't turn, then suspect that the pin or the clutch rubber has sheared, most likely from a mechanical failure in the compressor. Now the best way to diagnose either style compressor is with an OEM or equivalent scan tool. This will allow you to access the ECM's inputs and outputs and may also provide you with bi-directional control that allow you to manipulate the actuator while monitoring the changes in pressure on your pressure gauges. Now, failing access to this type of tool, consider using your scope to monitor the pulse width modulated signal to the actuator itself as you change the demand on the AC system. As you increase or decrease demand, you should see a corresponding change in the pulse width as the AC system adjusts to meet the new need. Now, if you do a lot of AC work, consider adding a tool called the EVC-1 to your toolbox. It's a specialty tool that allows you to connect directly to the actuator on the backside of the compressor. And then it gives you manual control so that you can change the state of the actuator while monitoring the change of pressure on your gauges. If you do suspect there's a problem with the actuator, be sure that you verify that all the inputs the ECM relies on in controlling the actuator are doing what they're supposed to do. The evaporator temperature sensor, low and high side pressure sensors, ambient temperature sensors are just a few of the sensors that may be involved in the ECM's decision. And as always, before you dive too deep into your diagnostics, be sure that you read up and understand the operation of the system specific to the vehicle that you're working on and that you've checked for any related technical service bulletins. Thanks for watching.